So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about IR basics, so infrared spectroscopy basics. So what does IR really tell us? IR tells us about functional groups. Now, the key with IR is to not overanalyze it. Sometimes the absence of peaks and the presence of peaks will tell us more, you know, versus having or not having them. So what are some basic things from IR? How does it tell us about functional groups? Well, the first thing it looks at is polar bonds. So how do polar bonds show up in IR? They show up as really strong stretches. So in IR, a lot of times the classic will see, you know, this is around 3,000 wave numbers. And, you know, there's a fingerprint region down here. The classic one people see is this big, broad peak, and they know that's an OH. And the intensity part coming down here, right, how it's so low, that tells us that's a polar bond. So polar bonds are really intense. Another intense peak you'll often see is something like this, right around 1700 or so. That's a C double bond O, a carbonyl stretch. That's also a really intense peak. Uh, so those are polar bonds. The polar bonds are intense stretches. Now, just because you're not a polar bond doesn't mean you're not going to have intense peaks or peaks that stretch down low here. CHs, especially sp3 ch say you have a molecule like this well these are not polar bonds right an sp3 hybridized carbon and a ch bond that's not a polar bond but if you have a lot of them right where this one has three five seven nine twelve they'll also show up as a pretty intense peak right sometimes as well these sp3 ch's SP3 hybrid stretches, not because it's polar, but because there's a lot of them. So the intensity of the IR stretches can come from polar bonds or an additive effect of lots of bonds. So now we've talked about intensity and polar bonds, and that's what the frequency kind of comes down, the low here. Let's also just talk about just basic regions of IRs. So there's the single bond region, there's a triple bond region, and there's the double bond region, and then there's a the fingerprint region, which we really don't talk too much about. Where these things fall is all logical based on bond polarity, but also based on the frequency of the bond. So how short the bond is also makes a big difference. So here, NH, OH, and CH are all here. The OH and NH, because they're polar, you see much more broad peaks. OH is much bigger than an NH because it's a more polar bond. CHs fall here. Now CHs are special because based on the hybridization state, we get different stretching versus and then versus an sp3. So this is the longest bond. So when you stretch this, it's going to have the lowest frequency. It's going to be the easiest to pull and push, pull and push, pull and push on a kind of spring. This would have the longest bond. This would be the sp ch to be the shortest bond, so it's going to have the highest frequency. Think about it going back and forth really fast really tight spring. And then the alkene, the sp2, is going to be somewhere in the middle. So what you'll see is because this has a higher frequency, it's going to have a higher wave number. So increase in frequency leads to an increase in this CM minus. So a shorter bond is going to have a higher frequency and a higher wave number. So these sp uh, SPCHs a lot of times are right around 3,300. You'll see them. SP2 is right around 3,000. And then SP3 is always less than, you know, do the, or less than, excuse me, 3,000. So it's usually around 29. Less than that. So, and down. So you'll see those. So, if you have a stretch at like around 29 below 3,000, that tells you of an SP3CH. If you have a really strong peak here, that tells you of a SPCH, but increase in frequency gives an increase in the wave number. Moving along, the next set is the triple bond region. So your nitriles and your alkynes are right here, right around 2,200. You'll see those pretty strong stretches. Then you go into the double bond region, which includes carbonyls, C double bond O, so things like esters, amides, ketones, aldehydes, 
Um, and then you have your alkenes and then your imine type things here. And then farther down here, like I said, we're not worrying too much about the fingerprint region. But again, this is just a tool to tell you what function groups are present, but not necessarily distinguish what the molecule is. All right, so here's just a table. This is a lot of times you see this as a table. Things I talked about, I wanna highlight here. These three, alkane, which is just another way of saying sp3 hybridized, alkenes sp2, alkyne sp. Right? Notice higher frequency, higher wave number because of higher frequency, shorter bond, right? Uh, so on and so forth. There's your alkyne nitrile. Now here's your cdo bond O, your carbonyl region, and a couple of these are. Oh, some interesting ones to think about. I'm going to highlight the ester and the amide and talk about that. So an ester versus an amide. So the ester has a higher frequency. And the bond we're talking about here, to be sure, is the C do bond O in both cases, the C do bond O. So if this has a higher wave number, that means this bond must be getting shorter have a higher frequency, this oxygen must be really pulling away electron density, right? Electron activity must be really playing a role here. That's making this much shorter. Whereas with the amide, if you look here, wow, this is much lower. The ester was at, you know, 1740. That's a really high wave number. It must be a high frequency. It must be a short bond. But then if you look at an amide, all of a sudden now we're around, you know, 1675. Why is that so much lower? Why is that? Well, the reason it is, for the ester, it's all about induction. This oxygen is electronegative and pulling away electron density, shortening this bond. But with an amide, just the opposite is taking place. With an amide, it's all about, not about induction, it's about resonance. And because of resonance, the amide bond, right, Again, this bond right here has some single bond character, right? That's the bond we're focusing on. It has some single bond character, which means it's a, partly a longer bond. So longer bonds, lower frequency, lower wave number. So that's why amides, because of resonance, this cedo bond O has some single bond character, which lowers the wave number. Whereas in ester, it increases because it goes there. Another neat example of some of this is if you look down here, which we've seen before, the fluorine and the iodine. So you can imagine a fluorine's um, much shorter bond, a carbon fluorine bond is much shorter, so it's have a higher frequency, higher number, where a big carbon iodide bond is much longer bond because iodine's so big, it's gonna have a much lower wave number because it has such a lower frequency. Again, to highlight to IR stuff, don't look for things that aren't there, look for things that are there. It's, it's a tool to identify function groups, not to identify completely a molecule.